All right, Secretary of State John Kerry just signed the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty. Great. It, if you don't know about it, is designed to regulate the international weapons trade, but some are worried it could actually take away some of our Second Amendment rights right here in the U.S. And a treaty cannot trump an express guarantee in the Constitution. Until we get that world government. government but, what, world but you know something, Brian? The people that are behind this treaty want that world yeah. government, and in their minds, this is a step toward it. You mean controlling ammo, controlling the amount that's available, eventually controlling the market? Eventually controlling all of us. Sure. Yes. A yes, world that, government. That's the value set of John Kerry, Barack Obama, and their allies in Europe who, who pushed this treaty. President Obama, on the same day that there was the horrible, tragic naval yard mm -hmm. attack, 13 Americans were killed in Washington, D.C. in the Navy Yard, that day, President Obama waived a ban on selling arms to terrorists. Now this is hard to believe, but President Obama did that. You can go to my website if you want to, bachman.house.gov. I've got the article. But President Obama waived a ban on arming terrorists in order to allow weapons to go to the Syrian opposition. And let me just read from one article. It says, some elements of the Syrian opposition are associated with radical Islamic terror groups, including Al-Qaeda which was responsible for the September 11th attacks in New York, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and Washington. This is amazing. The Arms Export Control Act, President Obama waives the prohibitions in sections 40 and 40A so that your listeners, U.S. taxpayers, are now paying to give arms to terrorists including al-Qaeda. Now this didn't get much notice in the press because it happened the same day as those 13 attackers, it happened the same week as 137 or more were killed in Nairobi, Kenya in that terrible mall shooting, the same week as over 100 Christians were killed in a church in Peshawar in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We had a week of bloodshed, including Iraq, including Afghanistan, including Iran. There was a lot of bloodshed that was going on. So people didn't hear about this. But, but this happened, and as of today, the United States is willingly, knowingly, intentionally sending arms to terrorists. Now, what this says to me, as I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, as I look at the end time scripture, this says to me that the leaf is mm -hmm. on the fig tree. And we are to understand the signs of the yeah. times, which is your ministry. We are to understand where we are in God's end time history. This isn't to cause us fear. This is to cause us, I believe, as believers in Jesus Christ, to grow up and mature in our faith and embrace. The prophets said they long to look to this time. The prophets long to look into the future, to see these days of his coming and herald his coming. And we're privileged to live in them. Yes, we are privileged. Rather than seeing this as a negative, Jan, we need to rejoice. Mm -hmm. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, his day is at hand. And so when we see up is down and right is called wrong, when this is happening, we were told this, that these days would be as the days of Noah. We are seeing that in our time. Yes, it gives us fear in some respects because we want the retirement that our, our parents enjoyed. We want our children and grandchildren to have wonderful, positive lives. Well, they will. If they know Jesus Christ, and if they know the glorious future that is set out for all of mankind, not just Americans, not just conservatives, but every human being that God ever created, that should give us and impel us on into the gospel. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in 
How to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing.